so on page 66, there is a um, rape scene of a man. It's about sex, really. What six-year-old needs to know about sex? When these books are in the schools, they're talking about like homosexual sex. And they're talking about changing your pronouns, and you might not really be a little boy. You might like you might actually be like a little girl. In the state of Florida, there are conservative elders op een kruistocht om veel boeken uit scholen te weren. Zelfs een adaptatie van Anne Frank is gewoon uit de school gehaald, samen met nog veel meer boeken. Ook boeken over homoseksualiteit, over gender en ook over de slavernij. Die moeten ook weg. En de zoektocht van de ouders, die is nog steeds gaande. We have to save our children. We have to save our civilization. We have to save our society. We're looking at books that are pornographic. We are looking at books that are sexually explicit. Books like this that are not true to history, um, to, true to you know significant people's um, diaries, things like that. Um, this was the first and only book we challenged for minimization of the Holocaust. Because usually, um, you know, when you have the true diary of Anne Frank, it has all of the information. It's true. This one's not. This is a graphic adaptation. So we've been just looking at books, you know, uh, across our county so this is just one you know public library in our county we're looking at school libraries and making sure that these um, items that are in school libraries are appropriate for children and would you also like it removed from here no absolutely not we think that everything should be available in the public library because let's say you and I have a child and we grab this book or if it's you know pornography or sexually explicit we can explain it with our children we know the content we're allowing our child to be able to check out that book for children in schools they're unaccompanied minors they can just go grab a book off and start reading it so what did you see or what did you find out in this Anna Frank's uh you know, diary, uh, comic book sure. that really bothered you? Sure. So the f first reason why we challenged it is because the author said this adaptation is less than 5% of the actual diary. So we want children to read the true diary. We want them to read about how horrible the Holocaust was. So why would children read this book in schools if it's not, you know, actually the you know true adaptation of you know what came from her diary but look this is what was challenged by you know some of our parents so you see there's a naked man here and it looks like Anne Frank is really scared again this was the author's adaptation of what he thought maybe she was thinking or mm. something like that I think people in the Netherlands if they look at this they'll start laughing like there's nothing probably. naked about this you know right probably <laughs> but again a naked grown man mm. with Anne Frank if it's this wasn't written in her diary in any capacity, why mm -hmm. you know ha why have it for children? And then this too. So she did talk about in her, one of her diaries that she saw nude statues, um, but never said anything about going into ecstasy or anything like that. And it was never obviously in picture form. So all these nude statues again, kind of, you know, not true to her diary again. But don't you think that these two people who, like, adapted by Ari Fullman, illustrated by David uh, Polonsky, that they're artists and they're just trying to express their artistic freedom? Sure, absolutely. They absolutely can do that. Um, and again, if it was true to the diary, if they didn't say that it was less than 5%, we would have never challenged this mm. book. And that's the thing with it being in a public library for free reading versus being in an educational setting where children are going to pick up this book and say, oh, this is the Anne Frank's diary, and they think this is the truth, and then they go to learn it. This is not the full, you know, historical, yes. you know, account of it. Hello. I'm Jenny. Nice to, nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. So this is the library. Yes, it is. We're going to check some books. I'm involved in like Bible quiz, so last year we went to nationals for that, and because I was homeschooled, I had time to study and memorize all the material. How many chapters can you re re can you uh, quote from Romans? Uh, seven. Seven chapters. Wow. 
This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to, gen to tell Gentiles. Gentiles everywhere, what God has done for them, so that they would believe and obey Him, bringing glory to His name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be His own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. That's the first section in that. Wow. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ability of homeschooling, right there, to to be able to do something like that. So, what are the books or what are the, the, the topics that are, uh, that are, you know, bothering you in a way? Sure. Um, when these books are in the schools, they're talking about um, like homosexual sex and they're talking about changing your pronouns and, and you know, you might not, you know, you might not really be a little boy. You might like, you might actually be like a little girl. And that's, and that's in the schools. And so we see these things and we're like, you know, I'm not really, I don't really think that these things are appropriate for like, for like these children. You're confusing, you're confusing these children. And for having a stance like that, for being skeptical of having books with homosexual sex, encouraging children to watch pornography, um, letting them know about um, dating apps in middle school and things like that. And whenever you have, whenever you're skeptical, it's like, I don't really know if those things belong in the schools. You are viciously attacked by these, uh, by these um, uh, activists. And so that's one thing that you have to put up with here. I think what they're trying to preach is a religion. I don't think they're teaching at this point. I think they're trying to indoctrinate our children in their religious beliefs. So when you say something like trans women are women, that's a, re that's a religious claim. That's just like saying Muhammad is God's prophet. That's a religious claim. It may be true, it may be false, but it's not the school's business. The, the school is not supposed to be instructing you in which religions are true and which religions are false. So if they tell my kid that th there are no men and women, there's just a, a, a spectrum. That's one of the ideologies they push. There's just a spectrum. Well, that's contradicting what my, the Bible says to me. Who are you to tell me my religion is false? I wouldn't want them to get up there and give a lecture on Muhammad's a faker, and I don't want them to get up there and give a lecture on women, trans women or women. These are religious ideas. It's a religious instruction that they're trying to give. Public schools should not be teaching religion. That was what I was offended by. When you know what you are teaching your child at home, and then when they go to school, something else totally different is being taught. It's not the math, it's not the English, it's not the civics, but it's, it's, it's about sex, really. What six-year-old needs to know about sex? You know, it's appalling as a mom to think I would send my child to school and then my child is learning about those things at that age. It is insanity for me. Yep, so we challenged a couple of these books here. This book was permanently removed from our school district. Now notice we're in the adult section. She writes adult romance novels. Mm. So all of her books have, um, she even says it in her, her um, biographies and autobiographies about writing books, steamy sex scenes, um, love triangles, um, a lot, uh, two or three of her books had um, orgies, threesomes, where there was more, you know, sexual partners than one typically. But that's what she writes. When he wiped his eyes and turned around, he could see the blurred edge of the bodies that were Matt and Drew, and the dark patch between their legs. Worse, what if he got hard right now, which was happening more and more lately? So this was in middle schools, ages 10 to 13. But you don't think that kids between 10 and 13 get a heart? <laughs> These are things that happen. Sure, they very well could happen, but what if somebody hasn't? Or what if a parent hasn't discussed that with their child yet, or they haven't? This is a good reason to discuss no. it. Like, Dad, uh, I got something, you know, on my Right, mom. but oh. it should be the parent's choice in most parents' decisions to have that conversation with their child. I mean, they're literally talking about genitalia of other people. Now we're in cookbooks. Uh, well, this is a section that you haven't checked out yet, maybe. <laughs> There's a cucumber in it. We need to be removed. That's okay. Because that okay. might look like... As long as they're not putting a condom on that cucumber, then they can that, do that. That right? might happen. Right. You have some people that say, you know, like, um, but Florida isn't only conservative. 
I want my kid to be reading about what it is to be a transgender or uh, how two guys love each other or how two women love each other. What do you say to those people? Because in some schools, the books are gone. There are no more books about it. If a parent want their child to have these pornographic books, they just go ahead and give it to them. They're everywhere, but you sh they, they should not impose what they want for their children on my children if I don't want my children to have those. You have these people that are saying, we have to have these books in the school. We have to let boys into the girls' bathrooms. Mm -hmm. We have to let boys onto the sporting fields with the girls. Um, we have to we have to affirm their identity because what what they're saying is is that there's all these trans kids that are out in the schools. There's thousands of them according to these activists, right? And unless we affirm them by having these books in the schools and um, and letting the boys into the girls' bathrooms and, in, and onto the playing fields, what these activists say is that if we don't do that, they're all going to kill themselves. They'll psychologically blackmail the school boards and they'll say, we want the books, we want uh, the, the, the Pride Progress flag, we want the, the, the boys in the girls' bathrooms, the boys in the playing fields, and if you don't do that, you either have, you're either a disgusting person or you're advocating for the suicides of all of these, of all these kids. Brave new okay. world. Brave new world. Yeah. Okay, let's pull that up. Okay, so we challenged the graphic novel, which is a picture book like this one. Mm -hmm. We um, challenged the graphic novel, the original one still in schools yep. for children to be able to read. We challenged this one for um, naked uh, people being in it and um, people that are fully exposed. Yep. Uh, one of the titles that's been removed is Kite Runner. Mm -hmm. In the Netherlands, it's like one of the best books that is that that you can read. Oh, okay. The schools encourage students, you know, right. read that amazing book. Uh, oh, you're wonderful. Thank, thank you so you're much. Welcome. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. So we can start with so, for example, on page 66, this isn't isn't the full book report. So let me just make sure there's no kids around. One second. No. No kids? Just an adult. Sure. Okay, yeah. I know. I was looking at, if you see any kids, tell me to stop. Um, so on page 66, yes. there is a um, rape scene of a man. Um, it starts with Hassan lay with his chest pinned to the ground, and he is sexually assaulted. His hands were pressed to his back. Yep, so that was the main reason why that book was challenged in our school district. But Khalid Hussein was explaining his time, his period in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And if he, if he or somebody else that he knows got raped, um, I mean, he's, he's just writing about it. He's not saying, oh, I love the way I got raped or the guy loved right. it. He's just telling his story. The, the book is removed from the library. Isn't this um, censorship? Because somebody thinks... You know, you shouldn't talk about rape in the book. That's right. So great question. So we get that all the time. So with Florida laws in K-12 to public schools, you can't have anything that's pornographic or sexually explicit. If this book is readily on Florida school shelves, and let's say our child reads this book but didn't know, you know, the context, and there's an anal, you know, rape scene in this book, right? We could not have that conversation with them because we don't know the content of this book, for example, yeah. right? Or let's say this was our children's library, pick a book, we don't know the content because we may not have read it, right? So at that point, it's considered harmful to minors because it's against Florida law. No one is banning books like on a citywide level or a countywide level or a statewide level. That's not going to happen, and I hope it never does. But what we're saying is, for this for this particular place during the day, where there's where there's children, we want the access to some of these sensitive topics, and we'll call them sensitive topics, right? Because they are. We want access to these sensitive topics to be to be restricted. We are hated, and we're we are viciously hated, all for the all for the thing of wanting to you know protect innocence 
and, and things like that. And so this is one of those things where we either shrink down in the face of adversity because there's tremendous adversity, but we either shrink down or we, we, we get the thick skin and we, you know, we get up, we grow a backbone and say, no, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to fight. And so that's what we want to do. We want, we want to do good. And, and if people can call us disgusting, hateful, transphobic, Nazi bigots, that's a small price to pay, and I'll gladly pay it. We have to save our children. We have to save our civilization. We have to save our society.